Turn to Hebrews chapter 12, okay? I'm told not to preach too long here, but... Oh, Lord. I don't pay him to come, but I probably should. (laughs) All right, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. I already quoted it, but I want you to see it in a little bigger context. And it sounds like I'm getting a little bit. I don't know. Maybe not. You decide. So Hebrews 12, 28. I'm in the ESV. Since we're receiving an unshakable kingdom, let us be filled with gratitude and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. (laughs) And I'm telling you, I'm going to repeat this verse a few times today, so please forgive me in advance because I want to give you some context on this, okay? Depending on the situation, sometimes it's easy to show gratitude, other times it's hard, right? We quoted it out of Acts 16. Paul and Silas had been beaten, and Paul was a Roman citizen. That was illegal. He didn't get a trial, so he could have been really bitter and upset. And yet at midnight, hanging in the shackles, they sang worship songs and brought an earthquake. I have a feeling they weren't singing the blues. They were praising God in the midst of the storm. So showing gratitude is crucial. The kingdoms of the world may shake, but we serve a God in an unshakable kingdom. That's right in the ESV. Since we are receiving an unshakable kingdom, let us be filled with gratitude. Can you do that? Just thank the Lord right now. The world may be shaken, but I stand on the solid rock. I'm not built on sinking sand. And then it says, and so worship God acceptably with reverence and with awe. And we know what God thinks about complaining. Just read the book of Exodus. (laughs) Didn't go well for them, right? Did not go well. Just two, Joshua and Caleb, made it. And it was because of all the complaining. So, Lord, just convict us, even now, if we forget how blessed we are and how good we have it, in spite of all the turmoil, And I'm not denying that there's turmoil in the culture. I get it. But my God is a consuming fire. That means I'm consumed by him. And that stuff may be raging out there. And I I keep thinking of Paul and Silas like this in the prison because they were in shackles. So they were hanging up against a wall with their arms up in the air, a perfect position to worship God. They didn't base it on the conditions they were in. They based it on their relationship. And that worship brought an earthquake. We want God to bring an earthquake to America. Amen? And everything that can be shaken will be. And that will only leave the things that cannot be shaken. And I hope that's your faith. Right? That's what Jesus said. Will I find faith when I return to the earth? And then just to back up a little bit, to give you a context on that verse 28, jump back to verse 26. I'm reading now from The Voice. It says, the one whose voice in earlier times shook the earth now makes the promise. Yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. That's a quote from Haggai chapter 2. Verse 27, the phrase yet once more, that he just quoted from Haggai, means that those things that can be shaken will be removed and taken away, namely the first creation. As a result, those things that remain cannot be shaken. Look at somebody say, that's me. I'm going to remain. I'm not going to lose my faith. I live in an unshakable kingdom. And I will not be shaken. Amen. I agree with you right now. Then if you want to drop back to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. I'm going to stay a lot in Hebrews today. This is also the voice, and you know we, we talk a lot, Danny and I and the other musicians and people on the worship team, and we really miss having more singers. Believe me when I tell you, those of you on the worship team, we want to build a bigger altar, some way that we can stay six feet apart up here. How am I doing? Six feet apart. <laughs> so that we can just hear each other singing, right? But it was great to hear you all today. I could hear you because of these side panels up. I don't know if you could hear each other, but man, I've been missing that. So he compares this to a race here in Hebrews chapter 12. Remember, 11 is the hall of faith. 
talks about all these amazing heroes. And then he says, since we're surrounded by such a great, what? Cloud of witnesses. All these amazing Christians that have gone before us in the Bible, but also just in church history. How many of you have somebody you can't wait to meet when you get to heaven? And I don't even mean like a Bible character. Like, obviously, I'm going to want to meet my mother. My mother was the one that led me to the Lord, right? So she not only gave me earthly life, she gave me spiritual being born again in the spirit. So I I really owe her a big debt. But I want to see my dad and a lot of my loved ones. But there's a lady named Betsy Ten Boom (laughs) from The Hiding Place. That's Corey Ten Boom's sister. She's amazing. Was amazing. And it has inspired me in ways that I can't even totally number because she's part of that great cloud of witnesses in my brain. And we all probably have a different crowd and a different cloud of witnesses, but people have inspired us to push through and we didn't think we could make it, right? So now he's saying the rest of that verse one, after since we're surrounded, let us drop every extra weight and every sin that clings to us. Is that easy? No, but do I have to be intentional? Yes. Yes. Drop it. It's clinging to you. Drop it. In other places, it says, put off the old man, as if you're taking off a garment, and put on the new man. So if it's clinging to you, drop it. Because what does it do? In the voice, it says, it slackens our pace. What's the pace about? We're We're in a race, right? So if you're in a race, you don't want to slacken your pace. You want to run to win. That's how Paul described it, right? And they had the Olympics in those days and and events like that. They used to compete in the Coliseum. And he said, if you're going to run, run to win. And then at the end of his life, he said, I have fought the good fight. I have run the race. People will use that often at, at memorial services and funerals. How about you? How are you running the race? Say good in Jesus' name. I'm running to win. If you're not so sure, say it by faith. I'm running a good race. That's it, by faith. That's right. It's by faith. In chapter 11, one after another after another. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Moses. By faith, David, right? By faith, we're running this race, and we don't want anything to slow us down. So he said, if that sin is clinging to you, let it go. Drop it off. And run with endurance the long race that is set before us. (laughs) So I'm just going to tell you, we don't pray in this church to say, Jesus, come back and take us home. That's a fatalistic attitude. Okay? So if you're feeling that way, that's okay. We just don't want you to stay there. Just ask Trisha to lay hands on you, and it'll change real quick. Just so release some of that fire. Our God is a consuming fire. My wife is a consuming fire. She's she's on fire for God, and that's awesome. We should all be, right? But, I mean, there's been times that she's felt that she needed a spark as well. That's one of the reasons it's so valuable to come together. And the Bible says, forsake not the assembling together. Not just the gathering together, but the assembling together so that we can let the sparks fly back and forth. If you're having a rough day, you can help me if uh, I can help you and, and vice versa, right? So that's all he's saying. We're going to run this race and it's not a short little sprint. It's a long race. And, and if you're discouraged, you're like, Lord, just get me out of here. I'm done with this. I, I wish you would just come back already. Like, no, that's, that's part of that passivity that tries to grip us when we're discouraged. We're here for a reason. I've said this, what I'm about to say about eight times in the last week. So if I was talking to one of you, bear with me. 1 John 3, 8 says, For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the the enemy. Then he said in John chapter 20, As the Father has sent me, so I send. Now, is that you or is that you? That's you. That's all of us here, right? So if he was manifest to destroy the works of the enemy, and he's sending us, As the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. What are we here for? To destroy the works of the enemy. How do we do that? By praying for people, by laying hands on them, by getting them saved, by once they're saved, helping them get delivered from stuff that they might have carried in, 
by getting the word of God out there, by bringing clothes to Patterson, all the different ways that we can act in a redemptive way as ambassadors for the Lord. So of course the enemy wants to discourage you. Of course he wants to unplug you. Because even if he just takes 10% of your edge off, you're not working at full capacity. Just lift your hand and say, I'm going to work at full capacity. I'm going to operate in the freedom of the Lord. By faith. Yes, you are. And I, I, I back that up. So Hebrews 12, 2 says, stay focused on Jesus. When you're having a little rough time, stay focused on Jesus. Anybody here a long distance runner? Got one over here. Well, I thought I'd get one hand up. All right, thank you, Rich. So you, if you're a long distance runner, you know at some point you're going to hit the wall. And that means you're going to want to quit. Your body is screaming at you. All the circuit breakers are going off saying, we're going to die, we're going to die, we're going to die. And you just keep pushing through. Maybe you could compare it to fasting, right? Oh, I better not drive while I'm fasting. I might pass out and crash in the car. Like, please take the bubble wrap off, please. You're going to be okay. <laughs> so, yeah, preach is right. When you hit the wall, you get something called a second wind. Ha! That's the wind of the Holy Ghost. That's what happens. When you're praying and you're fasting and you're pressing in and you feel like it's time to quit, sometimes that's just what it says in the Word of God, right? Weeping may endure for a night, but, but joy comes in the morning. You sow in tears, but you reap in joy, bringing in sheaves, harvest, if you push through and you don't quit. That's what this is about. He's telling us, stay focused on Jesus. I know you get tempted by your flesh to bail on the process or to stop talking to people because they're not voting the right way. You know, Thanksgiving is coming up and there's going to be all kinds of stuff. And one of the people I was talking to this week said, I was feeling a little discouraged that I wasn't changing fast enough. <laughs> We're trying to help her, you know, in ministry. And she said, I don't really, I was feeling like I hadn't changed. Then I realized that I'm hosting Thanksgiving dinner this year. And every other year in the past, she was so mad at the rest of her family, she didn't want to host. And just that alone proved in her mind, I'm not the same person I was. God's working on my heart because I don't have that horrible feeling when I think about my family. Well, guess that is not the devil. That is the Lord. That's what happens. You get shifted on the inside. It says he endured the cross and ignored the shame of death because he focused on the joy that was set before him. That's our formula for today. I'm staying focused on the Lord. I'm not going to be shaken. Do I, do I get tempted to engage in arguments and disagree with people and think really bad thoughts about other people? Am I the only one being honest right now? I said you get tempted. It doesn't mean you have to do it. Because when that happens, start singing songs in the night. I'm praising the storm. And though I am in the storm, not in me. The whole service was worth it just for that one right there. I'm telling you, that song will stay on your jukebox. He focused on the joy that was set before him. And now he's seated beside God on the throne, which is a place of honor. So Wednesday morning, when we don't know what's happened yet, maybe, will God still be on the throne? Will Jesus still be at his right hand? Yes. Will Holy Spirit be on the seat of your heart? Yes. That's somewhat conditional. That third part, that's going to be up to you. Because if you put something else on the seat of your heart, don't blame the Holy Ghost. Right? You still have a whole lot to do with this. I don't want to be on the seat of my heart. I've tried that. I ended up in a, in a plane crash. But I survived the plane crash. How about you? When I got pulled out of the tomb, there were so many grave clothes on me, it took the Lord a while to unwrap them all. But he did it, doesn't he? He takes off the grave clothes and he says, all right, you tried it your way, you blew it up. Try it my way. Wow. What a difference. Amen? No comparison. Verse 5 in the next chapter, Hebrews 13, says, be content with what you have. 
Because he has said, I will never leave you. I will always be by your side. I feel like somebody here needs to hear that. That's a quote. He's just quoting in the New Testament from Deuteronomy 31.6. Be content with what you have. And this is the quote coming because he said, I will never leave you. I will always be by your side. You know, if we thought that on a regular basis, we'd be a lot less stressed out, wouldn't we? If we really pictured Jesus right by our side, a very present help in time of trouble, that the kingdom of God is not a billion miles away. It's right in the atmosphere around us. Let your kingdom come in my life, Lord. Let your will be done in every transaction with every person, in every conversation, in everything I watch, in everything I listen to. I want it to be in the kingdom mindset, not this earthly carnal mindset. And of course, the devil would try to keep us distracted, but focus on the Lord, right? Verse 6 of Hebrews 13 says, because of this promise, we can boldly say, and again, he's just quoting from Old Testament again, Psalm 118.6, the Lord is my help. I won't be afraid of anything. How can anyone harm me? Then listen to your leaders who have spoken God's word to you. Notice the fruits of their lives and mirror their faith because Jesus, the anointed one, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That, that builds confidence in my heart that what he did in the book of Acts, he's still doing today. The Holy Spirit has not lost power because the last apostle died. That we are people that are filled with power, but we need to take the faith and step out in faith and demonstrate it. Amen. And then you all know this one, Revelation 1.8 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who is, the one who was, and the one who is to come. Amen? Can we pull in a little bit? Because there's some people in the back, it's starting to drizzle a little bit, and some people want to come in under, under it. So if you could pull up a little bit, just make a little room for them, that would be great. Thank you. I'm not going to go long. I'm, I'm winding down, actually. Whoops. All right, thank you all for, for making room. Look, I had to wait and see how it went this week, but we'll have tents up in the back next week, okay? Just, just saying. We love you all. We want to keep you comfortable. All right, you got 10 more minutes? All right, you can, you can time me. It's 11.37. I'm just going to speak this over you right now, okay? Hebrews 12.18. You have not come to the place that can be touched, as Israel did, to a mountain that's crowned with blazing fire, darkness and gloom, and a windstorm, or the blast of a trumpet and a sound of a voice, a voice and a message so harsh that the people of Israel begged not to hear another word. You remember this? It's in Exodus chapter 19. It's, it's the mountain of God is just on fire, and there's lightning, and there's all this Really, the people of God were so afraid, they didn't even want to look at it. They said, if anyone even touches that mountain, they'll be killed. Even a beast that touches that mountain will have to be killed. We're not being drawn to that one. We have a better purpose. It says in verse 21, the sight was so terrible that even Moses said, I'm trembling with fear. But instead, now we find out in verse 22, where have we come? That's it. Somebody's looking in their Bible. Hebrews 12, 22. We've come to a better place. We've come to Mount Zion. Where is that? In Jerusalem. That's the city of David. That's the place that God loves. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen? Oh, he that watches over Jerusalem never slumbers or sleeps. <laughs> no, instead, you've come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem. Heavenly messengers, that would be the angels, right? A joyful feast, the assembly of the firstborn registered as heaven's citizens. And I just feel like I should remind you that's who you are. You are citizens of a heavenly kingdom and your name is registered with God. So you are not defeated. You are not downcast. And I just speak against it right now. If anybody's feeling weary from the battle, we just speak a charge of energy into your life right now. Because that's who we serve. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in you right now. If you're feeling a little weary and you're, and you're up to it, just stand up so we can pray for you, okay? We got one person in the back, okay, a couple more people. Stretch your hand towards the people that are standing, okay? 
Look, this might be the main reason why we came here today. Lord, I thank you for the courage it took to stand. Your word says, in our weakness, your strength will be perfected. So I just speak that over those here right now, that the perfection of God will fill them with, her, with your power right now, and that their weakness will turn into strength. And the Bible says now, well, we certainly sing it, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done. So we ask you for a, an injection of energy. We ask you for an injection of hope and joy to fill your people. Whatever it is that's trying to tear them down, we sever that lie in the name of Jesus. And we speak life and health. And if you're, if you're having a hard time sleeping, we just bless you with that sweet peace that comes from the Lord, that your spirit would be wrapped by God and, and allow you to get the rest and the restoration that you need. It was Elijah that was supernaturally empowered. So we just speak that over you as well supernatural empowerment of energy and hope and joy in Jesus' name. Be filled. Be filled. You got something? The other thing I just want to mention, uh, the Lord was speaking to me about this this morning. If you have a, like, if, if you've been disappointed in the Lord or hurt or upset over things, I mean, hello, <laughs> look what's been going on. But what happens is we have a tendency to get a hard heart. And that hard heart, remember the disciples were with Jesus, and when they had a hard heart, they didn't even believe the miracles. Jesus said, you know, is it because of your, he says, your hard heart that you're not believing. And a hard heart can cause unbelief. So ask the Lord, you know, where, where, where's my heart at? Do I have a hard heart? Am I, am I harboring any kind of resentment or anger in my heart? towards you or it's not even intentional but sometimes we just get like you know i'm tired of this mess and and in our heart we shut down and so that's what hindered the disciples who hung out with jesus walked in unbelief right so now we need to address any areas of unbelief in our heart because that right. hinders us right? right i mean it happens to us all Right. And, and constantly I'm saying, Lord, show me my heart. I don't want to have a hard heart. I don't want to hold anger or resentment in my heart towards others, right? Or, or towards, you know, family members or towards you, Lord. And it's easy. Let me tell you something. It's easy in this hour that we're in because Lord knows it's so easy to have people get on your nerves right now. <laughs> so, Lord, we just ask you, let's just pray. Yeah. Father, show us our heart. And Lord, if we have a hard heart, I don't want your word to ricochet off my heart. Lord, I'm asking you to remove scar tissue. Yeah. I'm asking you to remove the hardness of my heart that's not allowed your word to penetrate because I don't understand. But Lord, your word says that your, your thoughts are higher than our thoughts and your ways are not our ways. So God, we just ask you to, to break through. And Lord, we repent for having judgments, for judging people because they don't believe like us. And God, ask, uh, I, Lord, we ask you to, to, to let us see people through your lens yeah. and to have your heart, not our opinion, right. but your heart, oh God. And so, Lord, we just ask you to remove the hardness of our heart. Forgive us where our opinion has overrode your word. Yes. We ask you to forgive us for that, Lord. And we thank you for your amazing love that you have for us. And you always speak truth to us because you don't want us to stay stuck. Right. So, Lord, we repent for doubt. We repent for weariness. We repent for unbelief. And, Lord, your word says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. You will supernaturally fill us with a strength. Your word also says in Isaiah, in our weakness, we're, we're made strong through you. Yes. And so, Lord, we just say, Lord, I feel weak. But, Lord, I thank you for an impartation of strength. I thank you today, Lord, that we repent for a hardness of heart, for anger in our heart. And, Lord, we lay it on your altar, and we ask you to come and uproot the roots. We're in agreement with you to rip up the root system of hardness of heart. In Jesus' name, yeah. amen. Amen. Thank you, darling. I was thinking of uh, two parts of the Psalms. It says, by the rivers of Babylon, we sat down and wept. And we hung our harps on the willow tree, right? But then there's another portion. After they came out of Babylon, it says, those who sow in tears reap in joy. And the song that we were taught was, take down your harps from that willow tree because it, it, it's time to sing a new song. 
That's what you got to do. I might be in the storm. The storm is not in me. I'm going to finish in Hebrews 12 and then one other verse. In verse 24 of Hebrews 12, in the voice, it says, You've come to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant between God and humanity. You didn't come to Moses. You didn't come to that mountain that was burning with fire. You came to Jesus, who's the mediator of a new covenant, who stands before between us and the wrath that would have come against us. Jesus stands and makes us acceptable in the sight of God. Not anything we could have done, but because of the power of the substitutionary work of what he did for us. And that blood of his sprinkled blood on the mercy seat of heaven speaks a greater word than the blood of Abel that's crying out from the earth. See that you don't turn away from the one who is speaking. That's Jesus speaking to us right now. Have faith. Don't get weary. Keep up the fight. That's what you're going to do. You're going to run this race to win and not become weary in well-doing. For the ones who heard and refused in Moses' day were punished. They weren't allowed to enter into the promised land. That's, that's where it gets to our text verse. That's why we're going to be thankful that we're part of this unshakable kingdom and offer worship to God that pleases him and reflects the awe and reverence that we have towards him. So would you stand up, please? I want to, I want to just speak this verse out loud together and make a declaration so that we'll be like a charge coming into our lives. And some of you know it. It's a memory verse for a lot of people, actually. It's in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. And I like this version of it because I don't have to look at my own weakness in the flesh because that's easy to do, right? Most people have a short list of your weaknesses if you ask them. And if they're being honest, and it's like, okay, no, none of us are perfect. But why should we still have courage to continue to do ministry it's because of the faithfulness of Jesus to fulfill his mission. And that's the one that we look at, right? So you can really say the reason we were able to even be saved is because he was faithful to the commission that God gave him. He came, no sin, left heaven and decided to come into this earth. I believe voluntarily accepted the assignment. And I don't think he was shaken. There are a couple points in scripture where you could say, well, didn't he ask the father to take away the cup? Well, he might have asked, but what did, what did he say? Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And you might think, well, what about when he was on the cross and he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And you might have thought he was having a moment of doubt. I don't. I don't think that. I think he was quoting Psalm 22, verse 1. Go look at it. It's all about the crucifixion. Every Jew that was present at the crucifixion would have known he was quoting Psalm 22, verse 1. And that he was the one David was talking about. And what's he called? The son of David. That's another day's topic. But the point is, we have been co-crucified with Christ. It's not a very fun picture, is it? <laughs> but we can't lean on the arm of our flesh. Doesn't mean our flesh is bad. It just needs to be empowered by Holy Spirit. And Paul talks about it over and over again. There's a war between your flesh and your spirit. And if you sow to your flesh, it'll bring death. But if you sow to the spirit of God inside of you, that's what brings you life. So when we say this, it's kind of a, we're, we're, we're like saluting to the Lord. And we're saying, I'm willing to be part of this commitment that it takes to be co-crucified with you. I'm not taking it lightly. I don't want a decaf version of Christianity. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. You could actually be bringing a reproach, right? Jesus said, if they're not for me, they're against me. There's no middle ground. So we're either going to try the best we can and be men and women after God's own heart, or we're going to display a version of Christianity that actually would turn people off. Another day's sermon. I get it. But you could start right here, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I'll say it and you repeat after me, all right? I feel like doing this. I have been crucified with Christ, the Messiah. I am, however, still alive. But it isn't me. It's the Messiah who lives in me. 
Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. That it's not that old man that's still alive. It's the Messiah that's inside of us that motivates us, that energizes us, that fuels the tank of our engine. Our flesh will lead us into the ditch, but Jesus leads us to life. And then we can be used to lead other people to life. Boy, does the world need life right now. I think this is the time the church will shine the brightest in the time of the biggest persecution. All right, back to this. And the life that I do still live. In the flesh, I live by the faithfulness of the Son of God. All right, now I know somebody said by the faith of the Son of God. I'm just giving you another way to think about it. By the faithfulness. This is a legit translation, okay? Not making it up. It's a great way to understand this. The reason I can get up in the morning and feel like I can serve God is not my merit. It's the faithfulness of the Son of God. That's why we're allowed in, because of what he's done. That doesn't mean we minimize other people in the Bible, but he has the supreme place. The King of kings, the Lord of lords. Forever, right now. One day every tongue will confess you are Lord. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Remember that song? That's a good verse, isn't it? So I want to confess you as my Lord right now, Lord. Not someday later. I live by the faithfulness of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Can you say that? I live by the faithfulness of the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. So lift your hand. I just want to speak a blessing over you. Lord, each one of us here are your disciples. We love you because you loved us. We recognize the corruption of our flesh and the corruption of this world. The only hope is Jesus. The only hope is the truth of the word of God. And you have chosen to co-labor with us as your ambassadors. So as we go forth into what we think might be a difficult week, Lord, we say in our flesh we are not up for the task, but because of your presence in our lives, we are more than conquerors. We are more than able. We can do all things only through Christ who strengthens us. And I just speak that encouragement into your people right now, Lord, that when we come together, we will be like life-giving forces for one another because we carry your spirit and that we would encourage one another and be in touch and be in prayer for one another. Stir up the gifts, church. Use the gifts. God will prompt you to call somebody and pray for them because he's given you a word for them. Don't walk past those. Those are opportunities all week long that we get. And if you're here and you don't know the Lord, we just want to say a quick prayer. Because by the faithfulness of of the Son of God, you have access to his kingdom. So say this prayer out loud with me if you don't know the Lord. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I heard good news today that Jesus loves me and was willing to die on my behalf to take the punishment that I deserved. I can't save myself. I need a savior. And I recognize you, Lord, as the one who can save me. I submit myself to you. I I bow my knee to your lordship over my life. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and fill me with your spirit to empower me to serve you all the days of my life. Can you just pray in spirit for a minute, church? I just saw like a swirl over somebody's head. We just cancel that confusion. We cancel that confusion right now. And we say, be free. Whoever you are, that swirl is going to be lifted off of you in the name of Jesus. And you are going to walk as a son and a daughter of a living God. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. If that's you, if you didn't, ever say that prayer before and you accepted the Lord today, could you just raise your hand so we can rejoice with you if you're here? We would love to celebrate with you. It might have been for somebody watching online. Doesn't matter to me. I'm going to keep doing it. In Jesus' name, somebody over here, hallelujah. Stretch your hand towards this brother up here in the front. Lord, we thank you that another name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life today that there's a celebration going on in heaven right now. That that a new name 
A new passport has been issued by the office in heaven. Lord, we just pray the seed of the word of God will fall on good ground. It will not, not be stolen by the birds of the air. It will not be trampled underfoot on the path. It will not get choked off by weeds. But it will bear much fruit in this man's life. Lord, 30, 60, and 100 fold for the glory of God. Lord, we just ask you to fill him, sanctify him, set apart for your work in Jesus' name. That's a reason to celebrate, church. Hallelujah.